to another vlog. Today I thought it would be fun to pack together for an upcoming trip. So if you're curious on some great winter accessories, what you need for skiing, I'm going to be sharing lots of packing and travel tips as well in today's video. That is pretty much what I have planned for my day. I wanted to show you a quick outfit of the day. I was planning on going to the nail salon, however they just called and had to reschedule it to a different time that was a little too late for me because I didn't want to miss dinner time with Josie since we are leaving. So I ended up canceling it, but my nails are fine. They're a little longer than I would like for a ski trip, but whatever. So I am just wearing some little yoga pants. These are from Abercrombie, very comfortable. And then this little cropped zip sweater. The sleeves are very long on it. And then just of course my everyday pearls. These are from Tiffany, but I'll link a similar size option down below. And then like my necklace, my ultra human ring, just my daily stuff. Okay. My cushions are flying off the patio. <laughs> I need to go bring those in. We're under a wind advisory. I am keeping this vlog very casual and just filming it on my phone. I normally pack in my closet, but the lighting in there is horrendous and a light is going out and it's flickering. So I moved a lot of the stuff that I'm packing into this room so we can pack together. But first I wanted to share a couple of my packing prep tips. If you follow me on Instagram, then I've shared this pretty much before every single trip, but I love to make notes in my phone. It's just a free notes app. I use it all the time as checklists, to-do lists, all the things Tim and I share notes to each other. And I have a travel folder and in there i always start packing lists because i in order to combat travel anxiety for me i'm a very organized person i have to start preparing a checklist and thinking about the trip weeks in advance so i kind of start a new note each trip a couple weeks ahead of time when i need to start ordering things for it or whatever and it just helps with my anxiety to know that i'm not going to forget something so whenever something comes up in my mind that i don't want to forget about I put it on that checklist and I sort of organize it by, you know, beauty, miscellaneous things I don't want to forget, clothing, and then I'll also go in and start breaking down the type of outfits that I need, what the weather would be like. That way I know specifically the types of outfits that I need to put together and pack for the trip. And then I also like to go ahead and throw any random recommendations or places that I want to check out for my research in that note as well, just so it's all in one place. And then if you're a fellow content creator, I also add in any content that I have in my mind that I would like to do. A lot of times it doesn't always all get done, but that way it's all sort of in that note and I know exactly where to look for it. So here's a look at that note for this trip that so we are heading to Jackson Hole again. <laughs> this is going to be my fifth time going there, but we've never been in the winter. Tim got me a ring for Christmas that I need resize. That's not exactly where we're going, but it is like an, ex it's, it's kind of why we're going to Jackson Hole to ski. We did want to do a ski trip. I haven't skied since I was 18. So we'll see if it's like riding a bike and then Tim has never skied. So wish us luck. <laughs> and then another thing I just started doing this actually for my last trip when I went to London and Paris, I made collages of all of the outfits that I wanted to wear and I put specifically like where I intended to wear them. And I loved this. It is more time consuming. So I'm not sure if everyone, if this is the right thing for everyone, but if you're creative like me, I found it so easy to be able to see exactly what I was packing. I could figure out what items I needed to maybe style or use a little bit more. Like if there was a piece I only wore for one outfit, I could look at all of the outfits and see if there was another look that I could 
use it for and it was just so easy and I didn't have to try on a bunch of stuff. I am probably one of those weird weirdos out there that I usually don't try on my outfits before I pack for a trip. I just kind of know if it's gonna work or not. I mean, sometimes it backfires, I guess, but for the most part, I don't try on every single outfit that I plan to take on a trip. So with my looks for Jackson Hole, here's a look at what I put together. And I'm also creating a new folder to sh keep all of my travel outfits together. So maybe I'll share that as like a resource at some point. But it was so nice to be able to see everything that I had for this trip. Now we will see if it all fits in a suitcase. I'm honestly not super hopeful or that worried about it because I do get free, two free checked bags with my status at Delta. But we'll see if it fits in one. That's great. But I have, I mean, with the ski trip, you just have so much more gear. Like I have to pack a helmet and all this warm stuff like puppy coats and things. So I am really not, you know, stressing that much over trying to keep it in one bag, but it would obviously be nice and easier for traveling. So in total, I have technically, I guess, 14 outfits that I'm trying to pack. Now I don't have a spa day booked, but that is a potential option that we're I'm gonna do on Wednesday, depending on how I feel. If I wanna do another ski day, then I'm gonna do that. And then I'm also counting like my pajama outfit as an outfit. So I guess in total, 14 different outfits that I'll be bringing on this trip and we're going for five days technically. We're getting in really late Saturday so I don't really count that as a day. So before we start packing I wanted to share some of my personal favorite travel accessories I guess you will and I also wanted to talk a minute about packing cubes and just share my experience with them. They're not for everyone. They're not honestly necessary in my opinion, but I personally really like packing cubes because they keep my stuff organized once I get to a location. Some of the cons are they add more weight to your luggage and they do take up space. I mean, essentially if you're using all of these, they are gonna take up this, amount, this much space in your suitcase. However, I feel like overall, it is worth it for me because once I get there, I can just pull these packing cubes out. I know this is my underwear packing cube and this is my top packing cube and I can find things easier and it also just keeps me more organized there instead of just having a big suitcase of clothes that you're digging through type of thing. Also, not gonna lie, sometimes when my suitcase is overweight, like when I was going back from Cabo last year, I didn't realize that luggage has to be under 50 pounds for international flights because I'm used to getting 70 pounds with my status at Delta. I, I think it's just because I have a Delta credit card. I don't know. But my suitcase was very overweight and I was able to just take out a packing cube. I was like, this is my new clutch now going to the airport. So it made that process easier too if you have to take something out for weight loss and <laughs> things like that. So yeah, I personally really like packing cubes. These are from Calpac. They've held up. I've had these since 2019. A couple of them have stretched a little bit in the zipper. I think there's just one really from me overstuffing it. They can help a little bit with space and compression too if you, like I do think they help with space because they keep it more contained. But you can also get more affordable ones on Amazon. Those are just a little bit of a different material. I have some in my travel container that I don't necessarily reach for since I have these, but I'll link some options for y'all. One of my favorite travel brands is, I think this is a small business. I know they're not on LTK, but I just love their travel accessories. I think it's from Bag All is the brand, but I have this absolutely enormous vanity case. This is essentially why I have to take a checked bag because this thing is huge. That's another thing. If you are a minimalist packer, this is not the video for you. <laughs> I should have put that at the beginning disclaimer because I, so growing up, fun backstory, my dad worked for Delta and he wasn't a pilot, but he was a computer, pro computer programmer. So growing up, like I basically learned to travel on standby and with a, a carry-on bag. I never checked a bag until my honeymoon 
when I was 28. That was the first time. And fun fact, my luggage did get delayed for two days on that trip. And I was like, this is what happens when you check bags. Cool. Um, which I'll get to a little tip for that later. All that to say, like, I'm not a minimalist packer at this point in my life. For one, I am a fashion blogger. So traveling for me is content and I I get most excited about planning the outfits for the trips. So I'm just bringing what I want to essentially. And of course there's a much more minimalistic way to pack, but that is, I'm not here to share those tips, I guess. Like I did go to Europe and I think I was in college, like freshman in college with just a backpack. So I can be if I want to be, but I don't want to be. <laughs> okay. Um, back to these. So I have a bunch of their different stuff. My mom actually just got me this one. Oh wait. Oh shoot. My mom just texted me. I was supposed to get on her call with her because she was going to help me with my QuickBooks and I forgot. She just texted me like, did you forget about me? <laughs> Crap. I need to text her back in a minute. But my mom got me this bag for Christmas. So this one fits the Dyson Airwrap. It says my hair tools. Not sure if it's flipped on the camera. This one is a enormous vanity one. And I usually do leave, I just reorganize my closet, but I usually leave my travel like size things in here. Cause I honestly traveled pretty frequently last year, almost every single month. Yeah, that was a lot. I did a lot of traveling last year. So I just kept everything in here so it was ready to go. And then I also have the makeup bag. My best friend got me this. We have matching ones. So when we travel together, our stuff just looks cute on the vanities. But this one actually does have some travel makeup things in here. Because um, it is helpful with things that are super big to just go ahead and get the little mini size at Sephora. And then I just love pouches and things. I don't think these are available, but these are from Target. I use these for hair tools before I got this one. And actually all of my travel size products right now are in here. So I'll just go through and pull out things that I need for the trip. Okay. And then for luggage, let me back y'all up a little bit. Okay. All right. So for luggage, I previously had a Delcy large checked bag and then I recently just got this larger one. I purchased this. I also purchased the carry-on size for Tim for Christmas and they were having a two, like if you bought two, it was less. So I ended up buying <laughs> the big one for me. So it would match my carry-on bag. <laughs> Yeah, I need to wipe this down. So I have had the carry-on version of the base luggage since 2019 and I love it. It is such good quality. It rolls really well. I love the handle and how you can adjust it. And it has memory foam handle. The carry-on, I will mention, is actually oversized for a carry-on bag, but I personally have never had any issues. But I did want to mention that because if you are flying Spirit or Frontier, that might be an issue. I'm just a Delta girly, so they've never said anything to me about it. So the checked bag is absolutely enormous. Like it is bigger than my Delcy. And the reason I didn't want it is because it does have the extender. So you can extend it out two inches, which I find very helpful if you're going on a trip and you end up shopping. I always try to make sure it can close on the way to a trip and then if I need to I can expand it out on the way back plus I am usually a much lazier packer on the way back and I feel like things just don't fit the same you know so here is a look on the inside it has does have a flap here that I personally don't find necessary and it is added weight so I don't use that and I usually put clothing on this side because this is where the roller side is and then on this side, you can see they have the zipped section. I usually put like extra snacks in here and chargers and things like that. And then you have a flat section on this side. So I have only used this on one trip. It flew a lot though, because we had a connecting flight. So I took this to London with us. And I was I bought a cover, but it didn't come in time. So it did get marked up. So just if that's going to bother you, I would get the black one. But it, personally, I just wanted it to match my 
checked bag and you can just wipe it down. There will still be some marks on it. Um, but I did get the protector to go over it for this trip, but I just use a magic eraser to wipe everything down. Also just a little like tip. We always wipe our suitcases down with like alcohol wipe before we bring them into our house. Um, the tires get so dirty for one, like you're, you're rolling them around bathrooms, airports, streets, you know, so I like to clean them off before we bring them upstairs and roll them on our carpet and they can easily mark things. So if your coat accidentally hits it, things like that, your shoes, you will get a lot of black marks. So we wipe ours down with alcohol wipes before we store them. This one I've had since 2019, this one's brand new. I don't know, the side by side, oh, wouldn't matter to y'all. And then as far as my favorite, like carry on bag. I usually do carry on both of these for flights. So I always bring a carry on roller. The one time I didn't was that trip to Cabo. And that was why my luggage was so much more overweight because I couldn't disperse anything. So I had everything in there. So I do like to bring a check or a carry on bag. Hopefully I'm saying all this correctly. I feel like, but typically in here, I will pack the day one things that I need. I always pack my makeup and any designer item that I'm bringing, like my bags or things that are more expensive, I put in here just because things get lost. So I was very glad I did that to London because our luggage actually didn't make it from our connecting flight in Amsterdam until the next day. So thankfully I had packed my day one outfits and had my makeup and stuff because I learned the hard way when we did our honeymoon in Hawaii how much it sinks to not have your luggage on a trip and you had to buy <laughs> sunscreen, mascara, you know, all the things. So I would recommend having some emergency backup stuff in your carry-on just in case. Okay, so this is another bag that I bring on the plane with me. This will be its second trip, but I had a smaller version of the same brand that I've used for the past couple of years. And I love this bag so much. It's so comfortable. Like it, the straps aren't digging into you like a never full would. It zips closed, so you don't have to worry about things falling out of your bag under the seat and things like that. And it is enormous. You can fit so much in here. So. That's another little thing. It's nice to be able to have room. Again, if you're shopping or if you just are running out of room, it's nice to have a bag that you can disperse things onto. Plus, one time when I was flying to New York a couple of years ago, I had to, like this bag wasn't gonna fit in the overheads. I didn't get on the plane early enough or whatever. And I remember I had like two designer bags, maybe even three. It was very excessive. I think it might've been, I think it was two. But I had to take them out at the gate and they basically sat on my lap because I wasn't prepared to have to check this at the gate. And I was absolutely not gonna check the bags because you just never know. So in that case, it's nice to have a big enough bag if there are things that you need to put in here if you have to gate check this. It's just good to be prepared. Now I always, like I have sky priority, so I get on as soon as I can. That way my bag fits. I don't have that issue. So anyway, this bag has the luggage roller in the back and it has two really deep pockets here and here. So usually I'll put my ID in this one until I get through TSA so I can easily find it. It has this back zipper here, so that's where I usually put like my Kindle. I don't think my laptop fits in there, but my iPad did. And other than that, it is a very, it can be a little bit of a dark black hole. So I do like to use pouches in here, um, but it is massive. It does come with a longer strap, but I honestly don't use it and it is pretty heavy. So I just took that off. Um, but yeah, this is my favorite little travel tote. And it does like smush under the seat. Although I usually just smush it under. And then once we take off, I take it out so I can stretch my legs under the chair. Y'all are like, girl, you can keep. I'm just, I feel like I'm a talker every time I film videos, but I guess that's the point. Okay, 
couple other little travel tips that I've learned along the way. So on my last trip, I did this and I was like, why the heck have I not thought of this sooner? So I just wanted to share it. I ended up bringing this garment bag. I just stuffed it in my tote. And once I got to the airport, I was able to take my jacket off and put it in here. And then I just draped it over my rolling luggage. And then that way, when I got on the plane, my coat was protected and not just on top of, you know, luggage. Cause the, again, the wheels will mark things. So it was nice to just have my coat stowed away. And plus I'm borderline germaphobic on airplanes. So I just liked knowing that it was covered. So that's just a little tip if you are like me there. It's helpful to always wear your biggest coat, especially if you're traveling, traveling in the winter time. I'm still trying to figure out what coat that's gonna be for me. Cause I have this huge puffer, but I just don't know if I want to deal with it. But at the same time, it's gonna be cold or going. So, all right, another travel tip, how I pack hats. So if I'm packing a flat hat, just like a basic beach hat, my favorite like Brixton hat that I've worn for years, I usually put that in my suitcase. I will just lay it flat on my suitcase and I usually stuff the middle just so it doesn't get crunched with socks and underwear or whatever random things I'm bringing. I put it in the center of the hat just so it's not wasted space and I just lay it flat and then I sort of pack around it. But obviously this hat is not going to lay flat in my suitcase. Plus I don't want it to get misshapen. This is my Kimosabe hat. I don't know if y'all have seen this or not. Maybe you have. For my fellow Swifties, I got champagne problems on the inside of mine, but I made this in Jackson last year when I went with Toyota. And I have honestly surprisingly worn it a lot more than I expected to. Maybe because of the price point, I just try to get the best cost for wear that I can out of it. So I've brought it, this will be its third trip back to Jackson. So yeah, that's my hat. But to travel with this, since this is an awkward shape, obviously you can wear it which I would not be opposed to. But what I typically do is I have this hat clip and it's very strong, it's from Top Tote. She, actually the creator of it is a fellow YouTuber, Lindsay Albanese. She's like an OG on here, if you know of her. But she created this hat clip and it is very strong. And you can clip this on your tote carry on or whatever. And again, because I'm a germaphobe, like this is enough, but because I like to keep my stuff clean when I'm traveling, I also will use, this is just like a dirty laundry bag that came in one of my suitcases. And I put it in this bag, that way it doesn't get marked up. And also my bands are not secure on here and they do come off a lot. So that way if they came off, like in the overhead bin, they would be secure in here. And then I'll just clip it on like this. And then when I get on the plane, I try to be super nice to the flight attendant and ask if they can have room in the coat closet to hang this up. And you can just loop it through a hanger and they can hang it up. Just obviously don't forget it when you get off the plane, but that way you don't have to have it in your lap or shove it in the overhead bin. So that's super awesome that she created that because it makes it so convenient to travel with hats. All right, so now I'm going to get into what I'm packing for this ski trip. So if this is your first time heading out to ski, these are the key pieces that you wanna have because it's gonna keep you warm and comfortable skiing. So starting off, let's just start with the bottom. Obviously I need sports bras, which I do not have in here. So I need to add that to my checklist or just something comfortable and supportive to wear while skiing is an activity. And then for the first layer, this is called your base layer. So I have this set from Sweaty Betty. I, this color isn't available, but they do have it in a pink right now. So I just have you know, top and bottom. I think I'm honestly just bringing one base layer. I mean, I'll have leggings and stuff. Like if these got gross, or I could always do laundry, but I feel like I can just rewear these on the trip. So that's my base layer. You just need something like fitted. There's a bunch of different blends that you can go for. Um, wool will definitely be the warmest. The brand Smart Wool is more of an investment, but they're a really good quality. Speaking of them, they, I do have their ski socks, which I would definitely recommend going with ski socks. And I love the Smart Wool brand. 
because they will keep your feet warm. But when it comes to socks, you definitely want good like cushioned socks because ski boots are very <laughs> uncomfortable and you don't want to double up your socks. Like that is a big no-no because it can create friction and blisters in your feet. So just have one good pair of socks. I have a couple, I think I'm bringing two or three socks just because I don't necessarily want to rewear those. Then depending on how cold it is, you may or may not need more of a mid layer. I'm bringing one just in case, plus we're doing a day of snowmobiling and that will be less active for my body. So I might be colder on that, but you can use, again, depending on, on the temperature, this is a layer that you can take off. So I'm bringing this fleece North Face pullover. Honestly, not super impressed with the quality of this, if I'm being honest, like for how expensive it was. I don't know, but I have it. So that's what I'm bringing. I feel like the color is even a little dingy, like after one wash, but that's fleece lined. So that will go over my base layer. You could also do a puffy jacket like Patagonia or something like that. And then over top of that mid layer is your top layer. And for that, the most important thing is to getting something 100% waterproof. Check because a lot of ski gear is water resistant and that is not the same as waterproof. I would definitely recommend, especially if you're a beginner, because you're going to be hitting the ice or hitting the snow a little bit, you know, you're going to take some falls. You want it to be waterproof because if it's snowing, you do not want water seeping through because that is, you're, you're just going to be miserable. So I actually have a ski jacket from when I was 18 that I might be bringing. My parents held on to all of our ski stuff. I could not believe it. <laughs> it made me laugh. Um, but I just have one from the brand Spider. But Tim and I also Tim needed a jacket. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to order this one and see if I want to keep it. I did not want to spend a bunch of money on skiing because we don't, I mean, I haven't skied in 17 years. And if we did ski, it would be once or twice a year max. So I was like, I'm not about to buy like all this cute ski stuff right now, but I did get this jacket. It was honestly a good price for a ski jacket. It's from the brand Dope. And I went with pink. Are we surprised? So this is just 100% waterproof. Everything is nice and sealed and secure. It's also a little bit thinner, which is nice. It is surprisingly warm, but that's my ski jacket that I'm gonna be bringing if I don't bring the other one. And then the other key thing is your pants. Again, you want these to be waterproof. So you do not want a wet booty. So these, are actually my ski pants from when I was 18. I could not believe that they still fit me. Um, but then when I was thinking about it, I was like, I guess they weigh this nearly the same. So I'm bringing these pants. They're still in great shape. They've hit some lifts. We've got some like lift oil on them, but yeah, so I'm bringing those. You can rent things like helmets. Honestly, we do need to get some goggles. The ones I was gonna order did not or we're going to come in time. So we will probably both be getting goggles when we're there. But I did buy a ski helmet. This was under 50 on Amazon just because I am a little more weirded out about sharing heads with other people. I don't know. So I bought my own helmet. This one's adjustable in white, of course. And then for your hands, just like the socks, your hands have to be warm when you're skiing. So I got these mittens. Mittens are gonna be warmer than finger gloves. So depending on how cold you typically get, I usually run on the colder side. So I went with mittens because they're gonna be warmer because there's less air going between your fingers and it like you can ball your hand up to help warm it up type of thing. So these are from the brand Hestra, I think. They had really great reviews. They are a little on the smaller side and I don't have time to get a different size. Honestly, I think they'd be fine if I was getting my nails done. I could clip them down a little bit because it's mostly my nail on my middle finger, but I don't have time. The other thing is you want to make sure your neck and face are going to be warm. So there's a bunch of different things that you could do. You can wear a neck gaiter. You can wear a headpiece. I've seen like these hood things on TikTok lately, but I am going 
like the neck gator route, I guess that's what they're called. So I got this pink one from the Dope brand and it's just a fleece one that will go up over my face like this. Basically, Ski Aesthetic is giant toddler with no face is, is gonna be my Ski Aesthetic. <laughs> I am definitely not gonna be a little snow bunny with like the cute suits that are a thousand dollars because I did look at them and I was like, mm, nope. <laughs> So another good base layer, if you don't have, I don't even know what material the Sweaty Betty ones are, but I also bought these fleece lined leggings. These have a like heel lock in them. Um, I mostly bought these for casual, but they could act as a base layer if I didn't want to re-wear re the other ones another day. But I figured those are basically going to be my leggings on the trip. I'm also bringing a nicer pair of gloves to wear around town and wear to dinner. These have a cashmere lining and they're leather, so they are nice to dress up or down. Kind of funny story. I actually hiked in Jackson with these last fall, like up boulders, like an off trail, pretty intense hike. It's called Delta Lake. And I didn't have any like not cute gloves. So we went hiking in my Reese gloves. I was like, wow, I am that girl right now. Honestly, I'm used to being that girl though, let's be honest. Okay. <laughs> and then another pair of gloves I'm bringing are these fingerless fur mittens. They are so cute, but I thought these would be good again for around town when you want to be able to like use your phone and they're also just really cute. So I had to have them. Okay. And then I found these adorable earmuffs. And these are on the shorter side. A lot of earmuffs, like I've ordered some from Amazon and they are too tall and they're like floating around my head. And that's not cute. And they're like bent. So these are so cute. And I love earmuffs and hair warmers or ear warmers like this because you can keep your hair down. Whereas beanies, like you can't have a ponytail or anything. Um, but I am bringing two beanies. This one's brand new. And this one I've had, I don't think it's available. It's from Loft last year. Just obviously this one's not gonna be one that I wear under my ski helmet. Cause the palm and the pearls would not be a good combo. And then this one's honestly pretty thick, but this will go up around my ears, I think enough. Plus this is gonna keep my ears warm, I don't know. So those are the winter accessories that I'm bringing. I'm also bringing some more of those smart wool socks. I am bringing some of these. This is the foot version. Honestly, I hate being cold and I just, I'm a type, I'm the type of girl that sits on a heating pad pretty much all year long in a heat and air regulated home. I'm just always cold. So I'm bringing these because if I have to stuff them down my leggings, I will, especially when we're snowmobiling to, we're going snowmobiling to a hot springs. And I just don't want to be cold. So I'm going to be bringing these. And then I also have, like, these are also foot warmers. I thought they were hand ones, but I will stick them in my gloves if I have to. So because we are doing the hot springs and it's also nice to do a hot tub after skiing and help to relax your muscles. So I am bringing a bathing suit. This one is from Be Try It and it is very flattering but also being very cute if you're going on your trip with your significant other. So that's the one I'm bringing. This is the bottoms. They're so cute. They're high-waisted and they hip at a good spot for me because I have a short torso and like some awkward hip bones and they cover the awkward hip bones without being too tall, if you know what I'm saying. And I think these are on sale. I got it last year. I think they're still available. Oh, one thing I did want to mention, I am bringing, or I'm wearing a pair of Uggs on the plane because they're just going to be my comfy shoes. And I, those aren't waterproof, just FYI, if you didn't know. You don't necessarily wanna wear them in snow and a ton of water, but I sprayed mine with this stuff on Amazon. Um, Cause I ran out of Scotch Guard, so I just wanted to try something new. So I'll keep y'all updated on how effective that is. But I did two coats on my Uggs. So I'll be wearing those on the plane. So just keep in mind your shoes. You don't, I, I mean, I wouldn't advise bringing stiletto heels or anything like that if you're gonna be walking around on snow. I'm hoping I ordered a snow boot, like a moon boot. I don't know if I'm gonna keep them, honestly. I don't know. I'm torn on the moon boot 
trend. And then for dinners, I plan to wear these booties. They're not too tall and I think I'll be fine, honestly, walking around town. With my Uggs, I bought these on Amazon. They're like little leg warmers. If you like the look of like the chunky sock, like sticking out of Uggs, that's basically what I bought these to look like coming out of the Uggs. So we might be wearing those for like the spa day if I end up doing that. So now, this video isn't long enough. So now I'm gonna show you how I pack like nicer items, like designer bags in case you're worried about them misshaping, which is totally a valid concern because you don't want it to be like packed incorrectly and then you open it up and there's a huge dent in your bag. So I am bringing this bag. It's in my outfit collages and I have this insert. You could totally just use like a lot of your bags already come with paper. So you could totally use that. And then sometimes I don't feel like this is substantial enough. So sometimes I'll put something else in here. I don't know what that will be yet. Like, I kind of want this with me, but just like something random, just to give it some more structure. I'm gonna put this in my carry-on thing though. This is just a backup charger that I got from Spark or from Advocare. And then I always take the chains out because that's another thing you don't want them pressing into leather. Caviar is more durable, but I pull all of the chain through and then I tuck it in. And then, like I said, I might end up stuffing this with something else, but then I'll put it in a dust bag and just roll it around on the floor. And I'll pop it in the dust bag and then I'll put that in this side. And typically I only put it in on the flat side because like I mentioned, your luggage, you wouldn't want to put anything that can misshapen on the side that has this wheel that will for sure dent your bag. So I always put bags on this side, plus it's zipped closed, so it's just more secure. Like if you had to open up your bag or you're going through security and they have to open up your bag, at least like, I know they're gonna open it, but at least it has like an extra layer of security there. Just found a Band-Aid, which I do always travel with Band-Aids. Um, and so yeah, I just definitely keep all of those in my carry on. Okay. The room is quickly becoming a disaster, but it's organized chaos. But, um, I did try this outfit on because I had a, a different sweater originally that was cropped and these are new jeans. So I just wanted to make sure the jeans fit and the sweater was too cropped and too bulky to wear under this faux fur. So I'm glad I tried that one on, but yeah, this is one of my outfits. I'm probably going to wear this with my Kimosabe hat. I think this coat sold out. I got it on clearance or on sale and then these jeans are a great winter white they're kind of like a ecru color i am wearing a size 27 actually this whole like base look is from Cezanne. i just realized that okay see so this is the look i'm going for and then you add the hats to make it jackson love it it's just i don't know i know some people are like you look like a tourist, which let's talk about that. Let's talk about looking like a tourist. So last time I went to Jackson, I actually shared a video on here. It was in August and I was showing all my outfits. Whoa. Whoa. You're, you're fine. Josie's fake falling. And someone was like, you're gonna look like a tourist. And I'm like, I'm fine with that. Cause I am a tourist. Like that's what makes it fun for me is dressing in a new environment, wearing new things going out of the norm. That's part of the fun of traveling for me. So I don't really get the whole, like avoid looking like a tourist thing, unless it's a safety concern, obviously. Like I know some people don't want to look like a tourist in certain countries, but I feel like I'm going to look like a tourist probably wherever I go, <laughs> but that's just what makes it fun. So I don't mind. I look like a tourist. And I don't know. That's just my two cents. I just wear what I want and I don't, don't worry about the rest, I guess. So you just wear what you want. That's the moral of the story. I got a 90 in this belt. I just kind of went with it because it seemed like a medium because it was in the middle of the two sizes, but it is way too big. So I do need to add more holes to it, which is why I wasn't that worried about it because I knew there's plenty of rooms to add holes. I just don't have time to before this trip. So I just need it though for the outfit. It kind of reminds me of like a horseshoe. 
buckle. So yeah. So after every trip, before we bring our luggage up, we always sanitize the wheels. Those get so dirty and they're just around airports and things like that. So I like to use a sanitizing wipe and clean up the wheels. I also quickly wipe down the suitcase in general. But before the trip, sometimes if there's a bunch of marks, I know this is totally optional, but I just like to get any of the scuffs off and clean up my luggage so it's nice for the next trip. I don't do this every single time, but I'm just taking a magic eraser. Most of it is just, you can just wipe it clean. Sometimes you have to scrub a little bit harder, but that's just what I'm doing now is just prepping my suitcase to get all packed. So much better. She's so pretty now and clean. I didn't like spend too much time on it. Like I could definitely buff that out, but it is so much better. Makes me happy. Tim's in here trying on his ski gear. Oh yeah. I'm ready, let's go. Oh, he's so excited. Let's go skiing. He's never skied. Never skied. Ignore my laundry over here. What do you think about my furry snow boots? I feel like I need to complete my outfit. Are you gonna try them on? I think you know you can't try them on. Your feet are much smaller than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so he ordered pants. He didn't have any. And, nope. and oh, okay. <laughs> nope. He's never been skiing, and now he's like ready to make it his <laughs> entire personality. <laughs> I really am. He's like I'm super ready, excited. ready, ready. I've always wanted to do it though. Yeah, he's like, I have a feeling I'm gonna like rent out a mountain house next year for like a month. Like a month. I'm like, okay, okay. I probably will. Okay. We'll we see. probably will. Okay. You probably will. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me try these ridiculous snow boots on. I have like a love-hate relationship with these. It's like they're so ridiculous. It's kind of like Uggs. But something about them is also kind of cute. I don't know. <laughs> That's the helmet that I bought. Did I share it? I think I did. Um, I it has an adjuster right here. And then this is for the goggle strap. Is that the MIPS thing? The MIPS technology? I have no idea. I think it's just in. It's like... Yeah, I think it is. I know you can tighten it. But anyway, okay, here's the snow boots. They're one size fits all and they're one like foot fits all. So there's not a left and a right boot. And they basically just feel like a Tempur-Pedic mattress. We just foam on the inside. Very We're ready. Are we? Let's hope all our flights and everything are intact. And we get our luggage. Yeah. I also wanted to share my luggage tags. I have it flipped over, but I just got these in from Shelter Island Paper on Etsy. It's a small business. So if you're looking for luggage tags, she has a bunch of different colors. Like you can do acrylic. I'll show you the acrylic one because it's a fake address. The white, I will say, is very discreet. Like you can barely see it. So just to show y'all, honestly, like you have to turn it to really see the info. So some people will like that, but some people won't. Here is a bag update. I am 100% gonna have to check two bags, probably just for like coats and my toiletries in the other bag. Most of it is in here. And here's how I packed the helmet. This is gonna work. I just shoved clothes on both sides. And then this is like my underwear and socks in, in the helmet. And this is all sweaters. This is pants, two jeans, leggings, this, it's like pajamas and stuff so that it was more more smushable making up words but yeah definitely gonna have to pack check two all right it is the next day we'll see if i can film this because i hear josie telling me to come downstairs so we'll see if she lets me film this but um we are leaving for our trip today so i wanted to show y'all kind of my go-to winter travel outfit and then i also wanted to break down what i have packed in my carry-on bag so i actually didn't end up bringing my small carry-on bag so i do have more in here than i typically would have because normally i have my rolling luggage but i ended up needing to check two large bags so i had plenty of room to work with so i have my hat ready to go clip it onto my bag and then i have my cashmere scarf i always travel with this use it as a blanket when i need to and then it is actually colder here in Atlanta than it is in Jackson today, which is wild to me. It's like in the teens here because a system moved through. Um, I think it was negative there though when they had the system. But I just know like walking, we usually 
if you're in Atlanta, we park at Atlanta West deck, I think is what it's called. It's a new deck. It's so convenient and quick to park. You don't have to circle around looking for a spot, which is what you typically have to do in the older parking lots, but you do have to walk a pretty good ways and then take a quick little train shuttle to the actual airport. So I just know I need to be warm for that. So I'm probably going to need the scarf and I have a coat. Um, and then I'll show, I'll just show you all quickly what I'm wearing. So I'm wearing a, a little matching set, just like sweatpants. <laughs> Hello. Um, I have compression socks on. These are from Lululemon for flights longer than two hours. I do try to wear compression socks to prevent blood clots. <laughs> and it, it's just, I find it more comfortable. Your feet don't get swollen as you're sitting in your seat and something about the compression just feels really comfortable. So wearing those and then I'm just going to wear Uggs. Oh, the stretch feels nice. <laughs> my booty's a little sore from my workout. And then I have just a white crew neck top underneath in case I get warm on the plane, which I don't expect to, but just actually if I get feel sick, I'll have to like be stripping down. So I have a layer underneath. I am just wearing a really comfy bralette. This is one from Bombas, which I've been wearing a lot lately. And that's all I'm wearing. I have a coat too. And then in my bag, let's break down what's in here. It is a little bit heavier than it typically is. Like I said, I have more in here than I usually do. So I ended up putting my two handbags in here and I'll show y'all how it looks before I take everything out. Hold on just a minute. I'm going to film it on, I have two phones. Film my current view here of how the bag is kind of organized. And I even have plenty of space to continue putting more stuff in. This bag is just never ending. Okay, so I have those two bags on the side and I'm just gonna be mindful not to shove, like I'll probably shove the other part of my bag under the seat, just again, to keep my bags secure. Then I have my noise canceling headphones. These are worth every penny if you travel a lot, because you just never know the type of noise you're gonna have on a plane and it also cancels out a lot of the airplane noise. So Tim and I both use these from Sony. Um, I keep telling him that I want the Air, Air Apple ones and he's like, no, the sound is a lot better on all the reviews that he's watched. So we're sticking to the Sony's. I randomly have these in here. How cute. I mean, these are the cutest earmuffs I've ever seen. Um, I just didn't want to pack them and like misshape it. And plus like if it's cold in Jackson, cause we're landing, these actually cancel a lot of noise too. It's good to know if you're on a plane. Um, when we get in Jackson, it's going to be dark. So probably going to be pretty cold. It's one thing to note if you are traveling to Jackson, Wyoming, they, their airport is outside. So when you get off the plane, you are outside. So keep that in mind weather wise. <laughs> But it is amazing because you are literally at the mountains right when you get off. It's the best. It's like the best airport too. Like they greet you with mimosas. It's so quick and easy and new. Okay, so then I have this pouch. See, it's all in here is just kind of things that I would typically have in my handbag. So I have my AirPods. I have this mini hairbrush, which I always have to have a brush on hand because I just like my hair. My hair gets like stringy looking if it needs to be brushed and I like it to look soft. So I brush my hair quite often. So sometimes I'll just travel with this and this will be my only hairbrush, but I had plenty of room for my full size one. Um, then I have some lip products. I have a hand cream because my hands will definitely get really dry on this trip. I have my bag holder. This actually, this was a bestseller on Amazon from y'all last year and I never leave the house without it. And I have my little makeup mirror. Of course I have my favorite lip balm. I probably have another one of these in my suitcase because I just can't leave without it. And then I have go-to lip products, my lip gloss or lipstick. And then I also am bringing a cuticle cream for once we get there. So this is kind of like my mini handbag in this bag. I just have my phone charger randomly out because I was using it and it didn't fit in this pouch because I was running out of pouches. But in here is all the chargers. I also have a little light for content. And then I have a portable charger shoved in here. Hopefully I have every charger that I need because 
I'm at the point in my life where I no longer know what the heck charges anything anymore. And I have to like try multiple cords and it's honestly annoying. <laughs> then in this, like I said earlier, these are all from Target and I don't know if they still have this print, but this is like my medicine one. So I think I already packed my vitamins. Normally I put my vitamins in here. Um, but in here I have just random things. So I do have some Advil because Tim's foot's randomly hurting him. I have this immunity booster. So this is like, if you're allergic to bees, basically don't use this, but I've been using this this winter to help keep me healthy. You spray it in the back of your throat. I have some tissues. I have band-aids. I have a fan, which I just charged. Y'all, y'all know this fan if you have watched my videos. Um, so I use, I always travel with this because I get very motion sick easily. And I've just learned after my last flight, now I'm going to be taking Dramamine just as a precaution from now on. It's just not worth it. So I have my Dramamine. This is the less drowsy, although I did take it on the way back preventatively and I could not stay awake. So I don't know. I have Zycam just in case. I randomly have hand warmers in here and I have some Tylenol. This is just like Tylenol that I keep in this little travel bag because I have been traveling a lot lately. And I have some peppermint oil. Again, if I get in sick, I will just start sniffing this and the whole plane definitely smells like peppermint, but better to smell like peppermint than throw up. So have that. Randomly have some dental floss and that's pretty much it in here. Okay. Um, next, let's see. I have my laptop and then this is the other pouch. So this is just a big travel pouch. Josie also has this too. So at the top I have my snacks. So I have gum, some chomps, and then some electrolytes, which I know we will be using a lot with the altitude over there. And also have some pistachios, which I love pistachios. Randomly have this. I thought this would be cute under my ski helmet. <laughs> we'll see. My gloves for when I get there. I do have compression socks because I originally didn't have these on. Honestly, I'm just going to take those out. Um, sunglasses. And then I have an extra phone case. I'm bringing a loopy because I can't show you because I'm filming on the phone. But the one I have on my phone right now doesn't have a loop. It has a thing that you can stick on to random things. That's like the universal symbol for sticking on, if you didn't know. I'm making that up. Um, so that's what's in here. And then that's pretty much it in the bag. And then just on the front sleeve, I have, of course, my wallet with my ID. And that is, oh, this thing's heavy. <laughs> that's what's in there. I'm going to put that on Tim's little mini rolling luggage. So I'm going to be actually carrying nothing. So that'll be nice. Here's a better look at my outfit going very comfy. Okay, wow. What am I doing? Like, what was that? That was awkward. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the video. So I hope y'all enjoyed this little pack with me. I hope you found this helpful and found some new tips and tricks. Thank y'all for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!